<laughs> Hello, this is Ron Clark. Today I want to introduce you to a friend of mine called The Integrator. Now, over here will be pictures throughout this uh, discussion because I cannot show you uh, the integrator itself. It is a consecrated tool. There is also a certain issue with uh, the physical uh, tool itself. Um, it was damaged in shipping. Um, so, at any rate, you're going to see a bunch of pictures and I hope they come out okay. So, the integrator. The integrator is the most complex tool I have ever made. Um, it is the most versatile tool that I have ever made, and pretty much the tallest tool I have ever made. Um, I made it specifically for the TMO Working Group, which I've spoken about in uh, previous videos. Um, I started work on the integrator in October of 2004 and finished it in January of 2005. It took me exactly 49 days to build the integrator. From start to finish, I worked 8 to 10 hour days straight through. It was quite a task. Um, the major portion was making all the little drawers. There's 49 little drawers in this tool. So that was a lot of work. Um, yeah, it is the most complex tool. It is capable of many types of work. Um, I show it here in this picture with two of its crystals. There is actually three crystals involved in the integrator. Um, the topmost crystal, which is a, a crystal wand, I'll show you a picture a little later. Um, uh, clear quartz crystal sphere, which is shown in this picture, and an obsidian sphere of the same size. So, here are another set of pictures of the entire body of the integrator, um, all set, will set up with the, the crystal wand and the clear quartz crystal sphere. And I'm showing you here the different sides of the integrator. There are seven sides to the main body of drawers. Um, there are 14 sides to the base and the top of the integrator, and then seven sides to what I call the cupola, which is the little bit on the top that the, uh, the crystal wand is fitting into, and the that surrounds the crystal, the quartz sphere. So there's th five parts to the body of the integrator. There's the base, which is filled with um, lead weights and copper, etc. And then there is the body, main body, which has the 49 drawers. And then there is a little section at the top of those and then there is the cupola, okay? And then the bottom there is a little view of the integrator from the top, the top of the cupola. The next set of photographs here show the cupola, and it has seven sides that each um, symbolize the seven planets. The, the integrator is primarily planetary in its design. There are seven colors around the base, you know, around the body of the drawers that represent each, se each of the seven planets and seven stages of the seven planets. So there's like the really base rough stage and the very highest most ephemeral stage of that planetary expression. Um, and then the cupola reflects this as well. It has seven faces. And there's a little picture of what a drawer looks like. Each drawer is triangular. 
And then we have a picture uh, on the left, or, well, the far one, um, is the integrator as it stood uh, was displayed in my home at the time on its own table and it has a silk covering that I sewed uh, made out of black uh, raw silk and uh, purple linen silk and there's a little bit of uh, um, uh, wool, green wool on the top and it's lined on the inside with black silk and it covers the entire um, tool. And this other little thing down here is a box that I made to contain, to store uh, the the two the quartz crystal, the 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 quartz wand, the quartz sphere, and the obsidian sphere when they're not in use. So they were each wrapped in silk and placed in that box. Now we'll come to a little more detail on the structure of the integrator. Uh, I made this little <laughs> graphic here and damn, but it took me hours and hours and hours to make this graphic at the time in a primitive little graphics program on my computer. So, um, at the bottom, you see there are three layers. Um, this is representing the physical realm. And as that little photograph in the very bottom down there shows, in, when I was making that bottom, I filled it with these lead weights. Lead is a very good grounding energy um, to have at the base in the physical section of this particular tool. There are also uh, copper tubing. I used a lot of copper tubing in this tool and copper wire. Um, there is copper tubing in there that spreads that grounding energy out throughout the physical level of the tool. Uh, and it's decorated on the outside in red, orange, and yellow. Then we come to the section of drawers. The seven, seven sides and there's seven drawers in each side, um, each planet as I was saying before, has seven drawers. Now, in these drawers, we placed solid fluid condensers, essentially. Um, what we did, the first thing that got placed in these drawers were chemical samples of pure uh, metals for each planet. So each planetary metal is in that planet's drawers. There was an ounce of each metal, metal, which was divided between the drawers. The only exception was uh, the mercury. Uh, we went with the mercury oxide, a cinnabar, powdered cinnabar, instead of liquid mercury, because it was much safer. So, like in the sun drawers, all of those sun drawers had little globules of the purest of pure gold. Uh, the, 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 the lunar drawers all have the purest of pure silver in them, and etc. You know, tin for Jupiter, iron for Mars, etc. Lead for Saturn, <clears throat> um, and copper for Venus. Um, they also then later throughout time had more things added to the drawers. The members of the TMO working group would send things to me to place in the drawers, or mostly it was things that I added myself. All kinds of things. A lot of chipped stone, um, different pieces of metal, uh, different stones that I would find that, that corresponded to the planets, etc. It was quite a mixture. There was at one point even herbs various herbs uh, distributed throughout the drawers. Um, okay, then uh, on top of the drawers is what I call the mental realm. Now this is 14-sided, colored green, blue, purple, and violet, and black. Um, there is also through here, oh, excuse me, through, through the drawers in the center 
of where all the little triangles meet for those drawers, there is copper tubing that runs the full length, connecting with what's down at the, um, the physical portion and then connecting to what's up here at the mental portion. The drawers are considered the astral portion of the integrator. So at the mental realm, there is more copper wire spreading it throughout and the color symbolism. Then we have the Akashic realm, essentially, um, which is the cupola. The cupola detaches its seven sides. Uh, let's see. We have a picture here for you somewhere. No, we don't. Okay, so um, it's, it's seven sides. Now there is copper running throughout down each uh, leg of the cupola, um, across the top, um, circulating in each of the, uh, the uh, planetary decorations. So it's very dynamic. The energy movement in the cupola is very dynamic. And on the very top of the cupola, there is a large piece of copper tubing which will take the, uh, the um, uh, double terminated quartz wand will fit in there or uh, the quartz, one of the spheres will sit on top of it, it's big enough. And that's connected to the wiring throughout the entire body of uh, the integrator. Okay, that's the structure of the integrator. This next picture shows a little bit of the creation of the cupola. That was a very intricate thing to create. There's a lot going on inside the walls of the cupola that are not really illustrated here, but it gives you an idea. And a nice close-up of the cupola with the uh, quartz wand inserted in the top and the quartz sphere sitting underneath it. It really encases it, um, the quartz sphere. Now, the next picture shows the two spheres that we use. Um, the quartz sphere and the obsidian sphere, a black obsidian sphere. Now, okay, the quartz sphere is r radiating. It radiates energy evenly uh, to its uh, surroundings. The black obsidian sphere, on the other hand, absorbs energy, absorbs light, it absorbs energy. It's magnetic in essence. The uh, quartz sphere is electric in essence. And so these are two uh, substances that are very useful in magical work. And then the next picture shows the double terminated quartz crystal, the wand. Um, Boy, it's a beautiful crystal, a powerful crystal. It's from Brazil. I have had gotten it uh, several years before I made the integrator, and it had been my a tool that I used regularly, and it was perfect for this, a directing energy, uh, amplifying and directing energy. A wonderful, wonderful tool. Now, we'll go back to the uh, main picture of the integrator here. Um, so, the integrator can do uh, just a variety of things. I defined nine basic functions, or actually ten functions that it can accomplish. Uh, with moving the, the crystals around in relation to each other in the different positions, on the integrator. Now, how the integrator was used, um, we project the, um, well, for us, we were using the Adonai light. Using TMO, we generate the Adonai light, you know, send it out for the blessing, comes back. We then project it at the body of drawers in the integrator. The, all the energy that we project to the integrator goes to the drawers. And what starts to happen is 
the energy starts to rotate just naturally because of the structure of uh, the integrator. So it rotates and I call it the integrator because all that energy integrates. You know, there's several of us projecting energy at this. So it's all these different flavors of energy as it were. Um, so they circulate and they integrate. They become one energy, one homogeneous energy. And they rise upward to those levels of the planets. They rise on the planets, as it were, till they get to the very top. Uh, they come up to the astral level, I mean, excuse me, to the mental level, and then they enter the cupola. Now, what happens in the cupola is even more dynamic. It takes that energy and it spins it around really fast and, oh, just all kinds of movement to the cupola. So it, it amplifies the energy we have just raised. Then what we do is we take that energy down into the sphere, the crystal sphere, sitting there on top of the, um, the, the mental realm, and we take it into the sphere, and then we do the Rabono Shalom of the um, magic of uh, Adonai, T the TMO. So we get it in the sphere, and then it shrinks to the center of the sphere and explodes and goes out to the metaphorical edges of the universe, comes back to the sphere. So that all that energy we've raised and amplified and everything has received the blessing. Now we can use that energy. We can do all kinds of things with that energy. We can raise it up into the wand up on top and shoot it out to whatever use we choose. Um, we can hold it in the sphere, we can expand it, we can transform it. That's one thing the cupola is very good for, is transforming an energy while it amplifies that energy. Say we wanted the electric fluid in the end, we send it up into cupola and let the cupola transform that energy or cause the cupola to transform that energy into an electric fluid instead of Adonai light. Or the other energy we can use with the, the integrator is the Catholic brilliance. So, uh, let me tell you about the nine different uses um, I established for the integrator. And this was, I discovered these while making the integrator and then experimenting with it immediately afterwards. So the very first simplest thing is a beacon of light. So we go through the process of uh, projecting our energies into the, the drawer section, you know, let it circulate and integrate, bring it up um, into the cupola, um, amplify it, bring it back down into the sphere, send it out, bring it back, and then bring it up into the, the wand, uh, needs to be in place, so that we, this uses the wand and the sphere, um, and then project a beam of light. Uh, this is good for, um, if you're doing an astramental ritual in which people need to come to um, a space, a place, uh, having the beacon of light is very helpful for them to anchor on the meeting place. Um, next one, works of, uh, ah, yeah, works of precision and focused power. Now here it's the same thing as setting up the beacon, except you, once it goes into um, the, the, the wand, you direct it towards whatever use you have um, predetermined. It's whatever you're doing, if you're doing a healing, you'll send the healing energy out from there to the person that's being healed. Um, 
softer works of radiating or translocating an accumulation. Here it is just the, the crystal sphere um, and not the wand. So you're bringing the energy up into the crystal sphere and letting it radiate from there. Or moving in, in entirety from one place to another. Suppose you're surrounding a person you're working to heal. You will take it from the sphere and relocate it to the whole body of energy to surround the person you're healing. Okay, making an astral doorway. Now here is where you use just the obsidian sphere in the bottom location. Um, it's sitting on top of the mental realm. I mean, excuse me, on, yes, on top of the mental realm, on top of the astral realm. So, this requires um, really working with the Catholic brilliance more so than the, um, uh, the Autonylite. Um, and you project it into the body of the drawers, uh, integrate it, circulate it, raise it up um, into the cupola, send it out from the cupola, uh, bring it back to the cupola, and then bring it down into the uh, obsidian sphere. Now, <clears throat> <clears throat> bring it up into the cupola and transform that energy into whatever uh, sort of astral doorway you want to establish. For example, if you're establishing a lunar doorway, you transform that energy in the cupola into a lunar energy. You send it out to the edges of the universe for the blessing, bring it back, and then bring it down into the obsidian sphere. And you keep pumping energy into that obsidian sphere by um, adding more and more energy into the body of the integrator and letting it go through the integrator and end up into the obsidian sphere. So you're increasing the energy in that obsidian sphere, the magnetic uh, response of the, of the obsidian sphere is emphasized and amplified and you establish therefore an astral doorway or connection to whatever realm you want to investigate. Okay. Uh, then, if you want to expand that doorway to more than the confines of the obsidian sphere, and say you want to expand it to your whole working space, the, the room in which you're uh, conducting a ritual, you can create you know, a lunar doorway for the whole room, so that the whole room is, as it were, transferred to the lunar sphere, or at least open to the lunar sphere, you simply place the clear quartz sphere on top where the wand sits. Place and take the wand out and put the clear quartz sphere out there. And that will radiate your doorway outward to fill your room. And it's just a matter of, you know, a, a mental desire to how large that doorway will be. Uh, let's see here now. Where are we down? Okay, and the a mental doorway is very, very similar to the astral doorway, except it's more refined in a sense. Um, the process is very much the same for creating an astral doorway, except you have the intention of the mental doorway, and you bring all the energy into the um, obsidian sphere down in the lower position and then you install the wand and this will refine it 
refine that energy for the mental doorway. Um, yeah, <clears throat> I'm summarizing here. Uh, now, vaulting. Oh, yes. <clears throat> you can create an electromagnetic volt with the uh, integrator. A very effective way of creating volts, especially involving people that are not really masters of the fluid to create it for themselves. Um, and for someone who has mastered the fluids, this takes half the time, say, to create a volt. <clears throat> so this involves both spheres, the clear quartz one in the lower position and the obsidian on top. Now, you start by, I mean, cathartic brilliance is all that's used for this. Nothing else will work other than the cathartic brilliance for this. So, you go through the same process of generating the uh, energy through the body of the integrator, raising it up. Um, <clears throat> you bring it into um, the quartz sphere and send it out for the blessing, okay? Then you let it radiate from the quartz sphere into the cupola. Now, in the cupola, you're going to change this energy into pure electric fluid and then direct it back down into the quartz sphere so that the quartz sphere becomes a ball of the electric fluid. It is radiating electric fluid very powerfully. Then you go, well, holding on to that electric fluid in the quartz sphere, you go through the same process of energizing the, the integrator through the drawers, raise it up into the cupola, oh wait, yes, into the cupola, send it out for the blessing, come back to the cupola, and you transform it into the magnetic fluid and transfer it to the obsidian sphere on top. And you do this until the, uh, the, the density of the magnetic fluid in the obsidian sphere matches the density of the electric fluid in the, the quartz sphere. And you have the two of them sitting right on top of each other. And this will form, once they equal each other, this will unite and form a volt, which can then be sent out after being, you know, empowered with one's desire. Okay. Um, it is also possible to make a doorway into the Akasha uh, with this configuration. Um, but I won't go into that. And you can use the obsidian sphere as an, a rudimentary magic mirror. Um, this involves just the obsidian sphere sitting on the very top all by itself. And you empower the, the integrator, you know, raise the energy up to the cupola, send it out for the blessing, bring it back to the cupola. And here you primarily want to deal with the magnetic fluid, um, depending on what sort of mirror arrangement you are going to uh, be using with, your, um, with the obsidian sphere. And then you raise that energy into the obsidian sphere. And if you're using the magnetic fluid, it just works wonderfully. Um, it's not a mirror like the concave mirror, um, but it is similar. You can see things uh, reflected in the surface of the ball, if you wish. Um, so, whew, like I said, it's the most complex tool I've ever made. <laughs> um, and quite a uh, bit of work, um, uh, definitely a labor of love, um, uh, serve for several, several years as a great tool. Okay, that's the integrator. Uh, next week, uh, I am not sure which tool, which tool I am going to be doing, but it is also going to be a matter of photographs because these are consecrated tools 
which I'm not going to stick on camera at this point in time. So, I hope you enjoyed the Integrator. Bye-bye.